We have talked about DFT. Now let's talk about the connection between DFT and the DFS. DFS is discrete Fourier series. Remember, in continuous time case, Fourier series is discussed for periodic continuous time signals. So, talked about discrete Fourier series, we need first we need to have periodic sequence. So, where do we get periodic sequence, and why is it related to DFT? Remember, when we define discrete time Fourier transform, we said that we sample the DTFT and then we get the discrete Fourier transform and we sample endpoint 0, 1 to n minus 1 if it's an endpoint DFT. If it's an endpoint DFT and the k goes from 0 to 1 and then n minus 1. Now suppose when we take samples, we don't just sample endpoint. Still, we divide the 2 pi period into n part. This is a 2 pi over n. And the next one is 2 times 2 pi over n, continuing like this. But suppose we continue our sampling. And continue our sampling. If we continue our sampling, we know this DTFT is periodic 2 pi, right? It has a period 2 pi. So if we continue our sampling, what do we have? K not just runs from 0 to n minus 1, we let it continue to run n, n plus 1. Continue like this, then what do we have? If we continue to sample, what kind of sequence do we have? We sample the Fourier transform for all multiple of 2 pi over n, for all k. Then what kind of sequence do we have? We get a the sequence, let's call it Y, and let's put a tilde at the top, we call this YK. What kind of sequence do is Y tilde K? Because after we sample, now suppose we sample to the next period of YEJ omega, then we still get the same sequence like the first, the sample that we get from the first period, right? So we get a periodic in sequence. More precisely, this y tilde sequence is defined as the samples of y e j omega sample at all multiple of 2 pi over n. It will be y n e minus j 2 pi over n and the k n n from 0 to n minus 1, but now we consider all k. And as we can see, it would be a periodic n sequence y, because we plug in k equal to n plus k, then we get y n e minus j 2 pi over n, k plus n, n. We can split this into two terms. E minus J, 2 pi over N, K N, and the other term is E minus J, 2 pi N, N, and this N will cross out, and it becomes 2 pi N, so this term is actually 1, so we are back to kth DFT point, or tilde N plus K, so we have y tilde n plus k equal to y tilde k. And of course, you can also see this from the figure. This corresponds to y0, this point corresponds to y0, and this is y1, this one is y1. And now we continue on sample at an frequency equal to 2 pi, we are back to y0 again. So if we continue on samples, we get a periodic sequence with the period n. In our computation of IDFT, we compute for n that goes from 0 to 1 to n minus 1. Now suppose we don't stop at n minus 1. We continue on evaluate the 
sequence for all n. Then what do we have? This is the idea of t equation, and originally we evaluate n for zero from n that is zero to n minus one. Now suppose we continue on evaluate this for all n. We call this a sequence y tilde n. And what do we have here? Do we get a sequence that has period n, big N? Why? Yes, why? Because if we look at this, this is actually an exponential sequence, right? So this is y tilde n is actually a linear combination of the exponential sequence and the linear combination coefficient is simply yk. This is exponential sequence. This exponential sequence, right? And what is the period of the exponential sequence? It's a periodic and the period is n. So we are linearly combining exponential sequences of period n to get y tilde n because each exponential sequence is periodic with the period n and when we linearly combine them we also get a sequence that has period n. You can derive this property similar to what we have derived above for the big yk. yn y tilde n plus n is equal to y n and it's periodic it has a period equal to n so when we do idft first we have the n point dft y k k goes from 0 to n and we can do n point idft then we get a sequence y n. Let's say this is how the sequence look like. Also from zero to n minus one. If we evaluate the expression for all n, we get a periodic sequence y tilde n. Now this evaluation of k goes for all k, so this is for all k, and um, instead of y n, we can also put y tilde n, and this is from y k to y tilde, y n is y tilde n, we can compute this from y k tilde k, k from 0 to n minus 1, and this is for all n. We still haven't talked about the connection with the discrete Fourier series, right? Let's get to that. Suppose we are given a periodic sequence y tilde n, and the period is n. Okay, can we express it? Can we express the periodic sequence as a linear combination of exponential sequence k? from 0 to n minus 1. Can we express it as a linear combination of exponential sequence? This exponential sequence, exponential sequence with the frequency, the frequency of such an exponential sequence has frequency 2 pi over n k times. Can we do that? So the question is, given an arbitrary periodic sequence y tilde n with a period n, can we express it as a linear combination of exponential sequence and the exponential sequence have frequency that are multiple of 2 pi over n? Indeed, we can, right? Yes. Why? Because of which equation? This one or this one? Because with this equation, right, it says that a periodic sequence can be written as a linear combination like this. And what is the linear combination coefficient? 
the linear combination coefficient is a k is simply 1 over n y tilde k and which is equal to y n e minus j 2 pi over n k n or we can put a tilde here because the sequence that is given to us now is y tilde n and n goes from 0 to n minus 1 and this y tilde k this y tilde k it has a name it's called the discrete Fourier series coefficient of y tilde n discrete Fourier series coefficient and we say y n and y tilde k are discrete Fourier series pair. They are a pair from the periodic sequence y tilde. We can get its Fourier series. We can get the discrete Fourier series coefficient. And from the Fourier series coefficient, we can also get back the periodic sequence y tilde n. This is a Fourier series pair. Another question. Suppose we are given a periodic sequence y tilde period n. What would be the discrete time Fourier transform? What is the DTFT? DTFT for such a sequence. Remember we have just seen that any periodic sequence y tilde n can be written as a linear combination of the exponential sequences, right? And for those exponential sequences, we already know what the Fourier transform is. What is the Fourier transform of a exponential sequence? Remember, when we have an exponential sequence, e j omega 0 n, an exponential sequence is the frequency omega 0, then its Fourier transform is, it will be a impulse function, right? It's an impulse, and where is the impulse? The impulse is at omega zero, and it carry a height of 2 pi. So when we take Fourier transform here, each exponential function is going to give us 2 pi, and an a. delta c omega minus k times 2 pi over n n here a goes from 0 to m minus 1 so what is the Fourier transform what does this tell us about the Fourier transform of a periodic sequence it's going to be from 0 to 2 pi and at every multiple of 2 pi over n, there is a impulse. Here's an impulse. And the height of the impulse is 2 pi over n y tilde 0. And the second one is 2 pi over n y 1. At 2 pi over n, there's an impulse, and the height is 2 pi over n, y1 tilde. And at 2 times 2 pi over n, an impulse, the height is 2 pi over n, y tilde 2. And it goes on like this. The last one is 2 pi over n, n minus 1 times. The height... 2 pi over n y tilde n minus 1.
Now let's do a little summary here. Suppose we are given a sequence y n. It has n point from zero to n minus one. We can apply Fourier transform, discrete time Fourier transform on y n, and we get y e j omega. Y e j omega is a function of omega, a continuous variable omega. And we can also sample y e j omega. We get the endpoint dft, which is a sequence of k, y of k, a sequence that is obtained by sampling the Fourier transform, y e j omega. Then we get a sequence. Zero to n minus one. A sequence y k. Now suppose we do periodic extension. This is a periodic extension. Then we get a periodic sequence y tilde of n that has period n. For this periodic sequence, we may apply. We may apply discrete time Fourier transform, and we can also compute the discrete Fourier series coefficient. If we compute discrete Fourier series coefficient, how is it related to the endpoint DFT of y n? They are the same thing. DFS, discrete Fourier series coefficients of this periodic sequence is simply y k. The height of the impulse is simply DFT coefficient of those DFS coefficient or the DFT coefficient of y n with a two pi over n scalar. So, for example, this is a two pi over n, and y n minus one. The height. Let's look at one example to illustrate the connection between periodic extension DTFT, DFT, and DFS. Suppose y n that is equal to one over n for the range n goes from zero to n minus one. So this is actually a、uh, sequence that we have talked about earlier. It's a、uh, n point rectangular window. That your rectangular window is equal to one over n, the length of the window. N is the length of the window, and it's zero everywhere else. And we can compute the DTFT of such a sequence. We can compute the DTFT of such a sequence. We have done that before. The Fourier transform of a rectangular window. We have computed DTFT for such a sequence before. Why this is what y e j omega look like, and we can also compute the m the m point DFT of such a sequence, m point DFT of such a sequence, and、uh, we can compute y k, which are the Samples of the Fourier transform omega equal to k times two pi over n. We can also perform periodic extension to obtain y tilde n. Y tilde n is simply obtained by repeating y n every n samples. In this case, what do we have here? This is a rectangular window with n samples. We repeat it again, and we get the same rectangular window, and then we repeat it again. Then, what kind of sequence do we have here in the end? Then we get simply get one over n for all n, right? This is the periodic sequence. 
And for this periodic sequence, we may compute its discrete Fourier series. Discrete Fourier series, which would be precisely the endpoint DFT of the rectangular window. For a constant sequence, we know the Fourier transform is an impulse rate, is an impulse at DC frequency, and with an, a height of 2 pi, and uh, but now this constant has an additional scalar 1 over n here, so we have 2 pi over n here. This is omega. And remember, the DTFT for a periodic sequence are impulses, right? Are in impulses. There are impulses. There should be impulse here at 2 pi over n, and then 2 pi over n two times, 2 pi over n two times, and 2 pi over n three times, all the way to 2 pi over n n minus 1 times. What happened to those impulses? Those must be impulses of height equal to 0, right? Because now we only get the one impulse instead of n impulses. Now we can easily write down, now we can easily plot the DFS coefficient. Okay. It must be just one sample and then 0, 0 all the way to n minus 1, 0 to n minus 1. And what's the value of the sample? What's the value of this sample here? 1. So the DFT coefficient or the DFS coefficient has only one non-zero sample, which is equal to 1 at k equal to 0 and 0 for all the other samples. Is this result consistent with what we have from the DTFT of a rectangular window? Remember, DFT are samples from the Fourier transform. And we have plotted the Fourier transform for a rectangular window before. If we plot the magnitude spectrum, this is what we have. It would, it's of this form. There's zero crossing, 2 pi over n, and 2 pi over n two times. At, um, multiple of 2 pi of n are the place of zero crossing for the Fourier transform. They are the points where the Fourier transform is equal to zero, except the point omega equal to zero. So when we take samples, so here's one samples and one samples, one sample except at omega zero, all the other samples of the discrete time Fourier transform taken at a multiple of 2 pi over n are equal to 0. And that's why we get 1 here and 0 everywhere else.